Hi, hi everyone. Happy Monday and welcome to week two of the six week challenge. Um, let me just get everything here situated and we will get started in a second. If you're on the call, let me know, say hi, um, see who joins this week. Cool, so yeah, it is week two of six. Crazy that week one is already over. Um, sent out the week two blueprint this morning in your email in your inbox. So um, if you haven't looked at that yet, it's in your inbox, go ahead and check that out. Um, I went ahead, you'll see that um, things are kind of a little bit different. They're laid out a little bit different um, as far as how you get the blueprint as they were last week. I went ahead and put them all up on my website. So you'll see um, if you go if you go to that link in your email, you'll see last week's blueprint as well as this week's blueprint and then the ones that are coming soon. Uh, this morning there was a little bit of a glitch on the mobile site that should be fixed now. So if you're trying to access this on mobile, shouldn't have a problem. Um, if you are though, like let me know in the Facebook group or something and I'll, I'll take another look at that. But should be accessible via, via your mobile or your desktop. And again, you've got week one and week two blueprints both on here. Um, you can flip through the pages while you're on the website, just like this. Um, or you can also click the button below and download it directly um, or open it bigger if you can't see. So if you could also make the welcome packet downloadable, that would be great too. That's a great idea. Um, I will do that. Um, thanks, Andy. I will add the welcome packet to this page today um, so you guys can download that as well. For those of you guys that um, were trying to download that before, I'll put that, I'll put that up. Cool, so we'll go ahead and we'll walk through the week two blueprint. Um, again, if you click here on download, it'll open up again in a big window like this, and you can kind of scroll through it bigger and then download it on your, on your device. So week two is all about above the fold. And I'm sure you know what above the fold means if you're in marketing or any type of website design. You should know. Um, it's kind of a common term, but just in case you don't know what it means, above the fold is just that section that appears as soon as you load a page. So for example, this is the web page exactly how it loaded when I first opened the blueprint. Everything that you can see here before I begin to scroll down the page, this is all above the fold. Now when I start scrolling, you'll be able to see the rest of this and this is all below the fold, everything below where I scroll. And that comes from newspapers. Um, newspapers, historically, you know, they're always folded in half. You know, you've got the headline and the front page story is above the fold. So they always put the most important stuff right there above the fold to entice you to unfold the paper and read the rest of it. And websites are the same way. Um, everything that you have above the fold on your web page, on your home page, and on the rest of your pages too, is where you need to put the most important stuff and it's what's gonna get people to keep scrolling down your homepage and get people to look at more things. So make sure your main message is up there, your main CTAs, anything for, for new visitors that they need. So this week I have seven uh, testing blueprints to walk through. And the first one is a static hero image. So if, um, some things that I see pretty commonly um, now is the carousel images, especially on e-commerce stores, where you'll have three or four or more uh, different images in the hero image section that just, that just kind of auto scroll and loop on a on a timer or something between different topics. And that's a great way, I think the reason that this came about is because it's a great way to get more content in that small amount of space you really don't have a lot of real estate in the above the fold section. So I think the idea behind this is let's just put it all up there. Let's tell everyone about this product line and this category and this sale we're running and we'll just put it all in there in one and everyone can just look at it. But the problem is that that can be kind of overwhelming to your new visitors. There's way too much to consume in such a short amount of time. And when it has the auto scroll feature, that's made a little bit worse because there's not a lot of time to consume what's in one slide before it scrolls on to the next one. So someone might be looking at your first carousel hero image, trying to read it, 
maybe about to click on the CTA and then all of a sudden it switches to the next one and it can be kind of a hassle or confusing to figure out how to go back. Um, some pages don't even have the back arrows or the little dots at the bottom to go back and you kind of have to sit there and wait for it to scroll back around and that can be frustrating and confusing and it disrupts the customer experience. So what we found when doing tests on hero images is that visitors, um, especially first time visitors, but returning visitors as well, respond much better to a static hero image. When you put an image up there that there's just one, it doesn't scroll, you just pick your main idea and you stick with it. And of course, through the year, through the month, whatever, if you have something else, you can switch it out. You know, if you're running a sale for a limited amount of time and you wanna make that your hero image for a week or two, you can do that and then swap it back in for the other thing later on. Definitely doesn't have to stay the same forever. But just having that static hero image, it's easier to engage with, it's easier to get the main idea of the site, um, and people really seem to engage more with the CTAs up there when there's just one. So I would recommend that as one test if you have a carousel currently on your store, um, just to focus on creating one good hero image that really defines your store or promotes one of those high converting products that you have or if you're running a promotion or a sale. Uh, create a hero image that focuses around that and go ahead and stick that up there in place of a carousel. Here's an example that we did uh, for a client that had a carousel. Obviously you can't really tell because they're just images on this PDF, but this did scroll. Um, the, the image on the bottom was a secondary image that it had, and we just decided to choose that image and leave it as a static image instead of having it scroll, and it did much better. Um, another thing I want to point out about this blueprint, you're not going to see as many um, links to download code or uh, plugins as the last blueprint did, just because a lot of these are a lot more simpler to implement, and you don't really need code to switch out a hero image. So there are a couple tests in here that I did include code for, but most of these are things that you can just do within your exi existing UX on your Shopify or wet WordPress store without needing any fancy code or plugins. So I didn't want to confuse anything by putting that stuff in there because you just don't need it. Um, high converting CTA. This is another great one. Um, a lot of stores don't really put a lot of thought into the CTA. Um, or don't test it enough to find out what converts best for their audience. Some things that are simple as like yum or go or yes please aren't it descriptive enough to tell the shopper what they can expect when they click on that link. And obviously the headline above it should describe it too. But when you have a descriptor in the CTA as well, you're going to get more clicks because people know exactly what to expect. So in this example, we have yum as the first CTA which is great, you know, you're shopping for snacks, um, which this hero image doesn't really make very clear at all within the headline or the CTA, but you're shopping for snacks. Um, yum comes to mind, so they wanna click yum to go shop for more snacks. Um, but a better version of that CTA was shop all snacks. Obviously, if you're clicking on a button that says shop all snacks, you know where you're going. You're gonna go to a page that has a bunch of snacks. When you click yum, who knows? <laughs> who knows where you're going? Um, so people are going to click on this more because they have a better expectation set for where they're going to end up. I did include a code um, for Shopify and WordPress on this. You'll see, because um, sometimes it's hard um, to get an actual button on there. So here's um, how to add a CTA button to a hero image instead of just having um, like the hero image have like a rendering of a button kind of on top of it. If you want to include an actual button, which I recommend, here is code for Shopify. And then um, I also included, oops, I don't want to actually go there. Well, okay, anyway, um, this is a really great plugin for WordPress. It's all about buttons. Um, it's not just for your hero image, but it works great for that. So I recommend downloading that if you don't have a button plugin yet. Sorry, I didn't need to navigate away from this. Let's let it load again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
So number three, CTA color. This is, again, something people don't really think about a lot, but um, when the CTA stands out more or it's a color that matches your theme better and catches the eye of the shopper, it is more likely to get more clicks. In this example, um, they started out with a blue CTA, changed it to an orange CTA, and it increased clicks by 14%. So just testing different colors you can test three or four different colors and run that test for a couple weeks and see which color gets the most clicks. And that's just a really simple, easy thing to change on your CTA button um, to figure out which, which one converts best. And I, I also have, this is the exact same thing, this code for Shopify and plugin for WordPress. It's the same as what's up here. Um, but just in case you didn't click on the one up here, I have it, have it down here too. Hero image with person. I love this test. Um, there's a lot of psychology behind this, but basically just like as humans when we're shopping or when we're literally doing anything, there's a little sense of ego in the back of our mind where we like to see other people or other faces. We, um, we identify with that better than inanimate objects. And so any type of hero image that has a face in it is going to, perform better usually than a hero image without a face in it. And you can include the product too. Um, and another cool thing is if the face is smiling, if you have like a smiling person versus a not smiling person, those are shown to perform better too. We didn't test that here, but we did, um, we did test a hero image that showed shirts versus a hero image that had a model. So the store shows, it sells a bunch of different clothing items. So we put a hero image with a model wearing some of the clothing items versus just showing some t-shirts laying on the ground. And it improved click-throughs by, oh, I can't even read that. It looks like 102%. It's a lot. Yeah, it, include, it improved click-throughs by 102%. So it wasn't getting a lot of clicks before. And that may be for other reasons. Um, I have a few other things about this that I would change too. Um, namely the CTA color and size, um, but it did get a lot more clicks. So if you uh, are struggling with getting clicks on your hero image and you, and you don't currently have a person or you do a person, but they're not smiling or you can't see their whole face, maybe you want to change that to see their whole face. I recommend testing that out. Um, another thing is proper hero image size. So this is kind of hard to get. It's a little tricky um, when you're trying to get the hero image size to show up correctly on both your desktop and your mobile. And if you're having issues with that, I recommend um, at least, if you, if you can't get to show up how you want on both, I would go for mobile. Definitely check your analytics and see maybe your audience shops more on desktop, but typically e-commerce is a highly mobile-driven business and most of your shoppers are probably coming to your site on a phone so if you have to make your site look better for one or the other, if you're having issues um, making it look good on both, go for mobile first. Make the hero image look best on mobile and then worry about desktop later because most of your shoppers are gonna be on their phones. So here, uh, proper hero image size is important because you don't want it to be too big. You don't want the hero image to take up the entire screen because then um, you're not going to be able to tell that there's content below it. You can assume that there's content below it, and people usually will, but you're not going to be able to see what's down there, um, which is less enticing, just keep scrolling. So you want the hero image to be short enough. You still want it to take up the full width, but you want it to be short enough so that you can see what's below it. But you don't want it to be too short to where you can't read the copy, you can't see the CTA, you can't understand what the hero image is about. So there's like a happy medium there that you want to find um, for the size of the hero image. In this first example, um, you can see that the hero image is a bit larger. You can see the headline for the section that's below it, but you can't really see what's in that section. And in the second version, you can see that the hero image ha size has been decreased, um, but not too much. It takes up about a half, a little bit more than a half of the screen size on top, and you can see below it, you can see the how it works section, and you can see um, about half of each icon in that section. And that is what I would recommend. In this case, they don't have featured products below the hero image, which is what I'm gonna get to next. But if you have featured products below the hero image, I would recommend having 
at least half of those featured products show above the fold. You want to be able to see, like if it's a t-shirt, the top half of the t-shirt, or if there's a model wearing a full outfit, you want to see like from her waist up at least. Um, that way they can kind of tell what's down there, but they can't see the whole thing. So they're like, oh, I want to see more. And they keep scrolling and they start to see more uh, content. So again, resizing your hair image shouldn't be difficult. There's no code involved in this. Just go into your store and um, change the height. Number six is uh, featured products below the hero. So like I said above, that one didn't have featured products below it. I recommend that you do. This is a great place to put featured products. The entire idea of your home page is to drive people to view your products. You want them to understand what your store is about, want to learn more, and then want to click through to your products. That's the three main ideas of your homepage. So putting featured products front and center right up there at top is going to get people to click through to those more, especially if they can see up here below the hero image, they can see featured products in a row of three or four things that they might be interested in. Put, putting things up there that are your highest converting, your best selling, um, or even new products that are new to your store. Those are some great things to put in the featured products category. Um, and then I recommend keeping it to one row. So if you have that section, I wouldn't do like two or three rows of five. You can still include, like if you have 15 images or 15 products that you want to include in that section, include all 15, but I would recommend putting them in um, one line, one row, and then have a swiper, have like a, an arrow or a carousel where you can, you can swipe to the left or right to view all 15, but it's easier to put it in one row, that way it doesn't take up too much vertical space on your homepage and the, the shopper doesn't have to keep scrolling down to look at more, they can just stay in one place um, and look back and forth at the different products. And finally, branded welcoming feature message. This is really important. So like I said, your site needs to let your new visitors know what your site is all about. Hopefully they kind of have an idea. They clicked through to your site for a reason. Either it was an ad or um, they heard about you and they went straight there or something. So they, they probably have some sort of inkling about what your site is about before they've visited. But you want to make sure that that inkling or that idea of what your site is about matches up with what they find on your homepage. And the welcome message needs to um, convey that in a succinct way, but in a complete way. So the, um, the main headline that you have up there should be short. I recommend keeping it to one line, but it needs to tell your visitors everything they need to know about what your store offers or what they can expect to find now that they've landed there. So in this example, you'll see that we've got two lines. It's really long. A lot of people weren't reading this because it's just, I don't even want to read it. It's just long. It says, Pretty Litter is the only kitty litter that keeps your cat healthy for less cost than other leading brands. It's just a long sentence. It's hard to consume and understand. I mean, yeah, I guess you know it's about kitty litter, but it's just long. So in the second one, we shortened that to kitty litter delivered hassle-free every month. So in that first example, you didn't even get um, the essence of what the brand is about. The whole brand is about delivering kitty litter straight to your door every single month on a subscription service. I didn't know that from the first hero image. I didn't know that from reading that first version of the welcome message. So I think, okay, I'm here shopping for kitty litter, but I don't know it's a subscription service. Down here, I know what I'm shopping for, and I know how I'm shopping for it. I'm shopping for kitty litter on a subscription service. And I... And right there in that short amount, that short sentence that I don't feel intimidated reading, it's right there in front of me. I know what I'm here for. I know what I'm shopping for. It clicks. So um, take a look at your welcome messages and your headlines on your websites and make sure, um, ask your friends, your family, strangers, whoever, post it on groups on Facebook and say, hey, this is what my hero, mes hero message says. What does this mean to you? When you read this sentence, what do you think? And get people's feedback, because sometimes you're too in it. It's your store. You know what it means. Um, so it's going to be hard maybe for you to understand how to shorten something down or make it succinct like that. But if you ask other people, you're going to get opinions that maybe you never thought of before. So that is this week's blueprint um, for all seven testing ideas. Um, as I said in the email this morning, I recommend, I hope, that you guys will choose at least 
one of these tests to implement in your store today. Um, I'd love to know which one you chose, which one was your favorite, or which one do you think is going to have the most impact on your store. So let me know that um, in the Facebook group. And we're going to go ahead and do a store walkthrough. So for week two, we had store submission. We're going to do a walkthrough for toysyouseek.com. So I'm going to go ahead. I meant to do this at the beginning, but make myself smaller. Okay. And we're going to do, this is a site review for toysyouseek.com, and we're going to do the, the above the fold. So above the fold on this site, um, some things that I first noticed um, is that it has a carousel. So I can see that it has these three uh, buttons down here at the bottom where you can click through the carousel, but it also has an auto scroll feature. So I would recommend um, that you test this out with a static hero image. And if you were going to choose one of these three, I would choose this second one, Hot New Toys, that kind of captures the essence of um, the entire store. This first slide kind of doesn't. Deals of the day, I see Amazon. Um, it's not really clear what the site's about. I mean, Toys You Seek, I guess I can tell what the site's about just by the name, but this isn't really clear on what I can expect to see. So, Hot New Toys. That's very descriptive. Shop the latest toy trends of 2018. That needs to be updated for 2019. Um, and secondly, I would say, obviously, um, the only one of these hero images that has um, a CTA on it is this first one. And it's not a real CTA. It's, it's like you can tell it's in the image, especially when you hover over this hero image. Um, I would remove this film at least, um, but I would recommend putting in a real CTA button. If you uh, download that plugin that I have um, in the blueprint, you can put a real CTA up in there. This is a Shopify store, um, I think. Yeah, powered by Shopify. So you can use that code um, to put that CTA button right in there and make it look like a real button, and that would draw more clicks. But again, I would recommend using this second one. Um, and you can put a CTA button right there on top of that. Um, I would also say the hero image size is good. It's definitely not too big. I think that it's actually a really good height. I would leave the hero image the size that it is, um, but I would try to move these featured action figures up maybe a little bit. Um, I can see, I can see this um, headline here. I would like maybe for that to be a little bit higher, like maybe right here. And then, um, then you maybe can move these images up just slightly. You can see enough of them. Like, this isn't bad. Um, but if you want to test something, I would say maybe maybe show, like, maybe this much. I would have this much peek up above the fold. or Because or, at least now, like, up here, I can kind of tell that this is Deadpool maybe. But I don't know what this is, says Disney. Um, if you have this much showing, then I can really tell, like, this is, this is Stitch. This is Woody. This is Deadpool. Um, and then I can tell you have different rows here, so this isn't really above the fold, but I would recommend moving these featured images or featured um, action figures up into just one row here so that the user can scroll um, between them. Um, and then on mobile, I would expand that search bar. I have mobile pulled up over here. Um, I would put the search bar expanded on the top. I guess you could do that on desktop too, have the search bar open so that um, it's easier for the person to access. When the search bar is expanded like this constantly, you're going to get more people typing search queries into it just because it's there and available. They don't have to click on the little um, magnifying glass. And the more people that interact with your search bar, the more people that are going to view products and the more people that are going to place orders. So having that open is great. Um, and then I know we talked about promo bars last week during the navigation blueprint, but I'll talk about it again here. I think you should definitely add a promo bar. Uh, you could do really good things with it here on this toy store if you're running any type of um, promotion for free shipping or percentage off, or even if you're trying to capture email addresses. Um, there's a lot of real estate up here for you to add just a, a short, sweet promo bar, and that's above the fold as well. Um, oh, and again, uh, with these these dots, if you are going to keep the carousel, which again I don't I don't recommend it, but if you're if you're if you're married to it, um, make it a little bit better by adding uh, the arrows 
instead of these little dots down here, those are kind of hard to see, easy to miss. Um, so if you put the scroll arrows on the actual carousel on the left and the right, that might make it easier for users to um, realize that they can move back and forth between these images on their own. Okay, cool. So that's good. Um, that is my full review of the toys you seek above the fold toy store. Thanks for the submission. I'm so glad that we got to review this. Um, and we'll go on to the last part of this call and do um, a live test setup. So again, this is the um, this is the storefront that I put together for the test that we did last week. Um, we'll use this again for the test for this week. So this is kind of what it looks like now. This week we're going to be using VWO as our testing tool. So last week I walked you guys through the Thrive Optimize testing tool, which is what I have personally built into my WordPress site. But I also have VWO as a testing tool that I use. Um, and it's external. You um, can download the VWO WordPress plugin. Um, directly to WordPress and then integrate it that way so it's really easy to integrate into WordPress but you can also use it with Shopify stores or big commerce stores or whatever you have you'll just have to I think add a line of code to the header portion of your website so as long as you have access which you should to the HTML of your site um, if you don't have WordPress you'll just have to add a line of code to the header section and you can use VWO I really like this tool um, because of its it's pricing. I think it's only like $49 a month for if you have less than 5,000 sessions a week or something like that. So that's really, that's really good. That's really affordable, way more affordable than some other tools like Optimizely or Convert. Um, I think it's about Thrive Themes is a little more expensive, but it includes a lot more. So anyway, this is what VWO looks like. There's a lot of different um, options over here on the side, but what we're going to go down here and see um, is the A-B test option. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then when you're in this, you can see the different reports that you have set up within VWO. And when you want to create a new one, you just click here to create. And then it will ask you, uh, what is the hypothesis that you are trying to test? So I'm going to set up a test right here for adding, um, nope, that's actually not what I'm going to do. Create a new hypothesis. If you have, um, if you have other hypotheses, you can choose one that you've already done. But what I'm going to do today is actually just resize the hero image and move up the uh, featured products. So it'll say, I expect that resizing the hero image and moving up the featured products will address, will accomplish um, getting more clicks through to product detail and product catalog pages. That's my hypothesis. I think that resizing the hero image and moving up the featured products will get me more clicks through to my product detail pages and product catalog pages. So the page URL that I'm going to be using this on, it's just my website, the sample storefront. Um, prioritization, how confident am I in this? How important is it? How easy is it? I think it's a five for ease, um, the other two maybe fours. Those are just, you can choose whatever you want there. Um, and then click create. And then you'll again enter the page that you want to test. Click next. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Eman. Thanks for joining. I just saw that you joined. Load for some reason. Okay, so when you click next, it'll open up the page that you want to test. You don't really need that open, so you can close that, go back to VWO, and you'll see that you have a control and you have a variation. So the control will be just how your page is already set up, which is what it just opened. That's how the page is already set up. You don't want to mess with that. Um, leave that how it is. 
And then you'll want to go to your variation, which is what you're going to be changing things on, and click here, click edit. And it will open up your web page. It should. Sorry guys, my internet is like super slow here today. We're having like an ice storm. So <laughs> hopefully this will load. It loaded a second ago. Just reload it. Okay. That's not what I want. All right, te technical difficulties. This is great. Let me just see if I refresh VWO. Oh my goodness. It's not loading for some reason. Um, typically, <laughs> this was working earlier when I did a walkthrough. Um, typically, when you click that edit button, it will open up your page with the VWO editor. Um, look here. Oh, Andy, are there any of these testing softwares that are easily or that are available as Shopify apps that integrate easily? Um, yes, the one actually the one testing tool that we're going to be walking through next week is called Fera, F-E-R-A. That one is built specifically for Shopify. So we'll be walking through that one. Um, literally, it's just an app in the Shopify app store. So if you want to go check that out right now. Um, it's free, I think, as long as you have traffic under 5,000 or 10,000 visitors like a month or something like that. It's free for the first year. So I would check that out. We're going to walk through that next week from next week's Blueprint. Um, and then the rest of these are integratable with Shopify. You just have to usually add a line of code. So they're not apps. They're something that you'll um, – and my face is like – I'll just show you my face since this isn't loading – um, you'll just have to add that line of code instead of doing an app with some of these. So check out Farah, F-E-R-A. That's a great one for Shopify specific, but the rest of these you can use too if you see any um, of these that you like better than Farah, because Farah can be kind of limited. It's got built-in skills that you can um, implement, um, but a lot of the other ones you kind of have to build out yourself. So I don't know what's going on with VWO, guys. Um, if I can't get this to load right now, I think... I will just have to um, film a tutorial outside of live later on, or maybe go live later on today when I when I have it working. Because <laughs> I want to show you guys how this works, um, but I also don't think it's going to load right now for whatever reason. So we'll try it one more time. Um, if it doesn't load, yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to load, guys. Okay, so. I will um, later on today when I can get this to work again. I'll either um, film a standalone uh, VWO walkthrough and just post that to this group, or I will go live again. Um, either way, it'll be a video in the Facebook group walking through VWO. But um, other than that, you guys, that is all I have for this week. Um, check out the week two blueprint if you haven't already. It is um, a little bit shorter than last week's, but I think there's some great stuff in there. Again, you can download it, um, so that's different than last week. You can go, you can go to this page on my website and see all of the blueprints that are currently available to you, as well as a download button. Um, and I'm going to add the welcome packet to this pretty soon, um, and I'll post in the Facebook group when that is up, so you guys can go and download the welcome packet too if you're interested. So yeah, that's it. Uh, again, happy week two. Let me know uh, what test you guys have decided to put up in your store for this week. Um, put that in the Facebook group. And I will talk to you guys later. See ya.